Rebuilding a large Clarkson single-cylinder vertical steam engine. Part 11. Crosshead bearing repair. I'm having a look at the connecting rod and the crosshead. The big end on this engine is very simple. It looks like a bush, which has a washer pressed or soldered to it. The small end of the connecting rod is the usual forked arrangement, and that fits across the crosshead like so. It has a pin that goes through the centre. Here's the pin. I'm going to test the amount of wear on these parts by passing a quarter inch reamer through them. There is a small amount of play in the fork end of the connecting rod, but there's quite a lot of play in the crosshead itself. This is the quarter inch pin that goes through the fork and the crosshead. It's supposed to be quarter of an inch in diameter. I'll check this later with the micrometer to confirm that. I'm now going to hit the crosshead with a hammer. I'm doing this for a reason. If you look closely at the crosshead, you will see there is a circular plug in the bearing. Now this is not a good thing. You can clearly see what's happened. This build has been a bit careless. And you've already seen another example of this type of carelessness with the crank web and the crankshaft. But what is done here is drilled all the way through from the other end with a tapping sized drill. Then he's tapped it to fit the piston rod, but gone, oh dear, I've gone all the way through the bearing. I could of course make a new crosshead completely, but this is really defeating the object. This is a sympathetic rebuild, so I'm going to repair this one. I'm going to silver solder it, and I've done this kind of repair many times in the past, and it is very effective. The silver solder is harder than the parent metal anyway. And if nothing else, it will hold the plug in place. Do not confuse this with soft soldering. This is not plumbing solder, and it's not electrical solder. This is silver solder. And the technical data is it's silver flow 55 using easy flow number 2 flux because I've got lots of that. The easy flow flux is made up into a paste with some water. So after initially boiling off the water, I now apply the heat seriously to the part. And what I would normally do is wait until the flux took on a watery appearance, not like you see it now. When it becomes very runny, that's the time to apply the silver solder. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to put the solder in early. And what will happen, you'll see a nice ball of solder on the top of the work. Here it comes. And the reason the solder's gone into a ball like this is because the work is not hot enough. Watch what happens as I increase the heat. The ball collapses and the solder runs everywhere where I need it to be. For this repair, I'm adding more silver solder than is necessary, far more silver solder than is necessary. But not only will the silver solder flow into the joint, it will reinforce the bearing. Once I turn off the gas blow lamp, you can see that the piece of metal is glowing red. So I won't be doing anything much with this until it's turned to black. Never quench a piece of work when it's bright red, always wait till it turns black. This will remove some of the oxidisation, but not all of it. To thoroughly clean up the part, I need to drop it into my pickle bath. My pickle bath is a plastic dustbin half full of a mixture of water and some stuff called Kill Rock K, which is formic acid, and it's not as powerful as sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is very nasty stuff indeed, and it's the sort of stuff that in the past has been used by acid bath killers to dissolve the victims. It's worth remembering though, you must check for the teeth periodically, because it's common knowledge that teeth take much longer to dissolve in an acid bath. A micrometer check on the pin that goes through the crosshead tells me that it's one and a half thou undersize, so I think I'll make a new one of those. The big end is a very good fit, so that will go as it is. And while my wife is in the acid bath, uh, I mean the uh, crosshead, while the crosshead is in the acid bath, I thought I would take this time to drill and tap for the grub screw to go down into the crankshaft from the crank web. This makes for a very secure fitting. It's not really necessary, but it's a real belt and braces approach. The grub screw now not only goes through the crank web, it goes tightly down into the crankshaft a part way. A viewer keeps asking me why don't I machine the crank web to a counterbalance type bob weight shape. I'm fully aware of the reciprocation cancellation, that's a good term, isn't it? Reciprocation cancellation of a bob weight, but I really can't do anything about it. I'm trying to keep the engine as near original as possible. This is a restoration rebuild not a new rebuild and redesign. And furthermore, the weather is still very bad outside and most unsuitable for being out there with an electric power tool sanding the mahogany cladding off the cylinder. 
I would at least have the choice of hypothermia or electrocution. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.